few days ago, one of the most fascinating discoveries in marine biology was made and it was deep under Antarctica. Researchers from Germany were operating a research vessel that had a camera and this remote camera was capturing images of the seafloor. As it did so, the researchers noticed that it came upon thousands and thousands of ice fishes an entire colony of breeding ice fishes with nests. Ice fishes are just as their name suggests, they live hundreds of meters under the ice in freezing water and their blood is transparent. The research vessel, which was actually not there to study ice fish, seemed to be catching only footage of ice fish. For their entire four hour drive over the seafloor under the Weddell Sea, the team only saw ice fishes. Ultimately, they detected 60 million occupied or active nests of fish the largest fish breeding colony ever discovered at any depth. In this video, we'll look at what these fishes are and what the significance of finding them at Antarctica is. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. First of all, this is an unprecedented discovery, the sheer size of it. And it has documented a kind of ecosystem that has previously never been observed before. Seafloor ecosystems are called benthic ecosystems and we've never seen such a spatially big one before with so many nests. The ice fish colony is thought to cover nearly 240 square kilometers and it held about 60 million individual nests. In this particular one, they found that each nest held an average of over 1700 eggs. Totally, the fishes made up about 60,000 tons of biomass. The discovery was made by the German research vessel Polar Stern, which took over 2,000 images over a period of four hours. These fishes have exposed eggs, but they also have many predators such as starfish and octopuses. So, male fish were standing guard in each nest. Nearly 75% of all the nests that they observed had a single guard fish posted. All these nests were on the inside. Along the edges though, at the perimeter, the nests had a lot of carcasses of dead fish, specifically female fish, and predators like octopuses and starfish had taken over and were devouring them. The researchers also noticed that there were indeed dead fish here and there in the middle within the colony, but when carcasses were found in the middle of the colony, they were just rotting there. It's only at the perimeter that predators were observed. Because a lot of the carcasses were female fish, the researchers speculate that they probably died after the breeding cycle when the eggs are laid or hatched. Another thing that the researchers noticed is the location of the colony in the Weddell Sea. The temperature here was nearly two degrees warmer than the rest of the surrounding area. The temperatures here measured from minus one to zero degrees, which was warmer than the nearby waters. What is of course unsurprising is that scientists have observed other animals here and not these fishes before in this location. Once they found out about the existence of these fishes, behavior patterns in other animals started to become apparent. For example, the Weddell seals that move around here are predators to these fishes. When the researchers analyzed historic as well as present day data about the movement of these seals, they noticed that the seals concentrated here and often dove down to feed on the giant ice fish colony. Now this was the most spatially expansive or the largest occupied area of any fish breeding colony ever discovered at any depth in the ocean. It is also one of the discoveries that make up a very large biomass of newly discovered creatures at the Antarctic seafloor. We've studied ice fishes before. Scientists know that these ice fishes occupy the waters around the Antarctic seafloor. Their nests are bowl shaped and they are at least 25 centimeters apart and they're on the floor. The shape like a bowl and not flat on the floor because on the seafloor, the ocean currents are lateral, they move sideways. So a bowl shaped nest prevents the eggs from getting swept away in these currents. It was observed during this finding that each nest had only a single guard fish, not more than one. Ice fishes, also called as white blooded fishes, are found in the Southern Ocean around the continent of Antarctica. They occupy waters where the temperature is between minus 1.8 degrees Celsius 
to 2 degrees Celsius. These ice fishes have clear blood because they lack hemoglobin. They are in fact the only known vertebrates to not have hemoglobin. But hemoglobin is what is responsible for transporting oxygen throughout the body for all animals. So how does the metabolism of these ice fishes work? Turns out these fishes have adaptations where oxygen is directly absorbed from the water through their skin and enters their body. But this has occurred over time because the genome still has some remnants of hemoglobin genes and they also produce an occasional red blood cell here and there. Now hemoglobin is highly efficient at transporting oxygen. So to make up for the loss of hemoglobin, the blood vessels in these fishes are all larger and a higher volume of blood is pumped through them. To facilitate this, of course, their heart is larger in size in proportion to their body as compared to other fishes. Many scientists speculate that this evolutionary adaptation was driven by the low temperatures at which they live because hemoglobin and red blood cells lead to blood becoming more viscous and thick in colder temperatures. But since the discovery now, we have even more questions. A few kilometers away, the research team discovered another piece of seafloor where there were empty nests, but these nests were abandoned and were instead taken over by corals. Now corals take decades to grow. So why were those nests abandoned and when were these new nests built? How are these nests built and how often do they get built? Do nests get reoccupied or reused and when are they abandoned? Why and how do some females seem to die after the eggs hatch? Do they die after they lay eggs or after they hatch? Where is such a large colony of fishes getting nutrients from? These are some of the questions that scientists still don't know the answer to. To understand more, the researchers are deploying a camera that will photograph the site twice daily for two years. This should reveal more data about this previously unknown ecosystem to us very soon.